now that you're able to connect microphones and instruments to your Scarlett, we're going to show you how to record them using GarageBand. In this tutorial, I'm joined by the fantastic Grace George, who's going to be performing a section of one of her tracks for us to record. We're going to record Grace's performance in one take, capturing vocals and electroacoustic guitar. We'll be using the Scarlett Studio CM25 microphone to capture the vocals, and we'll be plugging Grace's electroacoustic guitar directly into the Scarlett to capture that as well. In this tutorial, we're using the Scarlett 2i2, but these steps will work with whatever Scarlett you have because we're just using the first two inputs. And you don't have to use the exact combination of microphones and instruments that we're using in this tutorial. You can use the information in the previous video to connect the microphones or instruments that you want to record. Using an XLR cable, connect the microphone to input one of the Scarlett and then turn on phantom power to ensure that this condenser microphone gets the power required to work. Next, connect the electroacoustic guitar to input two of the Scarlett. Then set this input to instrument mode, as we demonstrated in the previous video. For the Scarlett Solo and 2i2, this can be done by pressing the button on the front panel so the inst lights up. And for the 4i4, 8i6, 18i8 and 18i20, open Focusrite control, go to inputs and switch input 2 from line to inst mode. Now play through your performance and adjust the gain dials to set the recording levels. Ensure that the gain halos are lighting up green, not yellow or red, as we explained in the previous video. If you're using a Scarlett Solo or a 2i2, then ensure that direct monitoring is turned on by pressing the direct monitor button once. If you're using a 4i4, 8i6, 18i8 or 18i20, then this will already be set up by default. Turn up the volume for your headphones until you can hear the microphones and instruments that you have plugged in. If you have speakers connected to your Scarlett, please use the monitor dial to turn down your speakers while recording in order to avoid feedback. On the Scarlett Solo, the monitor dial controls the speakers and the headphones, and we still want to use the headphones, so you'll need to turn off your speakers to record. Now open GarageBand and let's set up so that we're ready to record. Create an empty project. When you see this pop up, select the microphone option and select create. In a previous video, we showed you how to set your Scarlett as the audio device in GarageBand. This tells GarageBand that the Scarlett is the device that we want to use for audio input and output. To recap, go to GarageBand, Preferences, Audio. Check that the Scarlett is set as the audio input and output device, and then exit the Preferences. We need to create a second audio track because we want to record both vocals and guitar. Go to Track, New Track with Duplicate Settings. This will create our second audio track. Let's rename the tracks to keep the project organized. Double click on audio one, type in vocals and then press enter. Then double click on audio two, type in guitar and then press enter. If you'd like to, you can right click on this blue waveform and select a different track icon. These are the two audio tracks that we'll be recording onto and we need to tell each of these audio tracks where they'll be receiving audio from. You'll remember that we plugged the microphone into input one of the Scarlett. So click on the vocals track and in the bottom section next to input, select input one. You'll also remember that we plugged the guitar into input two on the Scarlett. So click on the guitar track and then select input two. The final thing to do before we record is record arm these two tracks. And GarageBand doesn't show you this option by default. Go to Track, Configure Track Header. Tick the Record Enable box, and then click outside of this box to close it. Click on both of these dots until they're solid red like so. 
you're now ready to record. Press the record button in the top bar to start the recording and you can hit spacebar to stop recording once you've finished. Just look at what you could have had as I'm walking away. Here comes the realization that you, you made a mistake. And when you see me, if you don't know what to do, just remember, baby, I'm better than you. Once you've finished recording, press the space bar to stop the recording and press the record arm buttons again to turn them off. There we go, you can now record microphones and instruments into GarageBand using your Scarlett. I'm now going to show you how to do a basic mix of your recording. You can control the volume of each of the individual recordings by clicking and dragging the volume fader on that track. To reset any of the controls to their default setting, hold down Option or Alt and click on the control, like volume, to reset it. You can also add effects to the recordings that you've just captured. I'm gonna show you how to put some reverb on the vocals. If you don't see this mixer section at the bottom, then click on this button just here. Click on plugins and hover over an empty slot and click to see the plugin menu. Go to reverb and space designer. You can select presets up here, like the soft plate, for example. Your presets may look different to mine depending on which version of GarageBand you're using. Then the only control that you need to use in here is the reverb output. This allows you to control how much reverb is being applied to the vocals. Dragging this dial to the left reduces the reverb and dragging the dial to the right increases the reverb. You can adjust this to your liking. You can then close this reverb plugin by clicking the cross in the corner. If you want to open the plugin again to make adjustments, then you can click on it just here. You can also experiment with adding more effects from these menus like delay, EQ, and more. You can now progress on from this video and we'd love to know whether you're up and running with your new Scala. If you are, that's great, but if you still require some assistance, then we can direct you towards our support team.